What is up? We're gonna be going over a full week split to develop your speed, power, and explosiveness as an athlete. So I'm Coach Nick, certified strength and conditioning coach, work with hundreds of athletes and run the peak performance program, but let's dive right into this so you can get some valuable information on how to actually set up your training style or your training program throughout the week. Now we are using certain methods in that that I've described in other videos in depth, so you can check those out um, if you need a little bit more background information in them. So we have the first three days up and then we're gonna dive into the next four, five, and six uh, when it comes to this, and seven actually. Our first day when we are the freshest, I wanna make sure that we're getting the most amount of strength and power development that we possibly can in order to maximize our results. So when we're talking about speed, power, explosiveness, it all comes down to how much force you can create how quick and how quickly you can create that. So we're working on this phase, we're, or this day, we're working on the aspects of maximal force production. And as the week progresses, we'll go into more of the power, quick twitch, fast explosiveness, and transfer of force into it. So day one, again, this is our lower body strength and power. So we're gonna start our workout with an Olympic style lift or power-based movement where we are gonna be uh, challenging what's known as strength speed. So it's in between maximal strength and power. So it's a little bit of a heavier load, but we're moving it quicker with a good velocity to develop that power that we want. Okay, so we're gonna start with something like clean pulls because we can really amp the weight on this type of exercise. When it comes to power, your exercise selection is critical. So that's why I wanted to give you some examples of what you can do. So we're doing clean pulls. This is to develop the lower body power and strength in a coordinated fashion to get a lot of vertical forces as we're doing this. We're gonna be roughly in between three to five sets, anywhere from three to five reps. And that's all we're focusing on with maximal rest in between to where you feel like you are 100% and you're ready to go. After that, now we're gonna get into a contrast training set. Contrast training sets are great because they take advantage of something called post-activation potentiation, where essentially we're priming our central nervous system to be able to produce more power and more force. So a great exercise for athletes, they all should be doing this, is a just a traditional front squat. It challenges the core, it really challenges the quads and the glutes a lot. So we're gonna be doing front squats paired with a drop-in box jump. And we chose the drop-in box jump because you get a, a greater eccentric loading that you have to overcome to then jump onto that box. And that's really gonna help you develop that explosive power. With this, we're thinking anywhere like three, four reps or three, four sets. Again, anywhere from three to five, maybe six reps might be a little high for the contrast training. So stick to right around three, four, five reps. We don't wanna be fatigued before we go into our drop in box jump. So this is like a super set. You can take anywhere from like 10 to 15 seconds in between. Keep the sets and the reps the same on both of these. After we've really gotten that power and explosiveness, now we wanna round the workout out. We wanna make sure we're hitting all the different muscle parts for our lower body. And it work a little bit different areas like stability, core, different things like that in mobility to help make sure you're setting yourself up for the long term to be successful. So we're gonna do a single leg RDLs. This is great for developing the posterior chain, hamstrings, core, and uh, stabilization of the hip, which you are gonna need to be an athlete and be able to perform very well. So we love this exercise. Then the next two that we're gonna go on is just uh, a carry. So this is like a loaded carry. So this is great for developing dynamic trunk control, overall stability of the whole body. It'll uh, actually help you like be able to handle more load as you progress this up to get more and more out of your strength work that you're doing there. And then we'll finish it off with something evolving around hip mobility. So this could be something that's challenging the hip flexor and psoas, or it could be opening it up just to round us out. It's not a lot of exercise, not a lot of volume because we have a lot of frequency throughout the week. Now, day two, we're gonna move into our upper body. We're gonna let our lower body take a rest because on the following day, we're gonna have some speed agility work that we're gonna be doing. We want it to be recovered, okay? So this is our upper body strength and power day. We're gonna be going with a very tried and true power method. It's gonna involve a little bit of the legs. It's gonna help with overall force transfer and that's the push jerk. This is a great exercise for developing overall upper body strength and power. After we get through that, so same reps over here, we're thinking three to five reps or three to five sets, three to five reps total where the weight's heavy, but we wanna make sure we're locking it out and it's still moving with some pretty good speed. So think on both of these, we're thinking like 75, 80 to 85% of your one rep max. 
Now, after that, we're gonna go right into our contrast set, okay? A big area that a lot of athletes don't hit is the upper body power and explosive movement. So we wanna make sure that we get that in here. So we're gonna go for a single arm bench. This is gonna help us with some unilateral loading, again, some more core stability that we're sneaking in there. And it's gonna be more translatable to what you actually do on the field as it's one arm versus just both because we're not really doing that a whole lot. We're gonna pair that with an explosive chest pass. And again, we're gonna use a little bit of legs in this because everything that we do in sports is when it comes to the upper body, it's always gonna involve the legs, core, and transfer up to the top. So we're gonna do that with an explosive chest pass. We're really gonna focus on driving out with the leg and then transferring that force through the med ball into the wall, trying to pop that ball, trying to be as aggressive as possible with it. After that, we wanna, again, just clean some things up, round this workout out. So wanna make sure that we're getting our lats involved and we wanna hit our triceps, okay? So we're gonna do another superset, which we can do any sort of vertical or horizontal pool variation. Um, I chose the weighted chin-ups, this is just a great exercise. It hits the biceps a little bit um, and it's a compound movement. And same thing with the dips, we're getting that tricep work, we're getting a little bit of the lower traps, it's another, or not lower traps, lower chest and it's gonna help us develop that overall strength that we're looking for. After that, we're gonna, again, we need to make sure we're hitting all planes of movement when we're going through our training and our week of training. So we're gonna implement some rotational power and some lateral rotational power to hit the transverse plane, which is gonna help our athletes out. We're gonna be using a med ball quick toss. Again, this is to be able to catch, react, and get right back into a throw and it's gonna be very beneficial for those times where you really can't load up to generate a lot of force. It's gonna teach you to generate that force very quickly. And lastly, to keep ourselves healthy and safe, we're gonna to start to implement some shoulder prehab. So this could be anything like a Cuban press, YTWs, external rotations, things of that nature to help yourself out. So we got our two main strength and power days here. Our third day, now we gotta take it onto the field. Because as athletes, we can't just always be in the weight room. We have to make sure that it actually transfers out onto the field. And that's the most important part for you. You can be as strong or as powerful as you want in the weight room, but if you can't transfer it on the field, you're not gonna be any good. You may not have the scouts looking at you, or if you're an amateur go, looking to go professional, this is super critical for you, okay? So we gotta make sure we get out on the field or in our actual sport where we can start to transfer this over during our off season and season when we're training for it, okay? So we have our acceleration and agility a day. The acceleration and agility day is here because it's not as taxing on the body as say a max velocity day. It's a lot of concentric forces that we're doing so it shouldn't break you down a whole lot and should allow you to be able to continue to train hard throughout the rest of the week. So this is where we have our acceleration and agility day, okay? So we start off with some technique work, doing some three, five, and seven cone starts to teach the negative step, proper angles, just working the technique so we can get a little bit primed and warmed up before this. After that, we're gonna start to transfer it now into a little bit more acceleration, a little bit more power work with a half kneeling start. I love these, they really teach the athlete to stay low and drive out at the proper angles. Um, it helps to really develop that single leg, that first step, uh, power that we need if we're trying to accelerate quickly. And we'll do anywhere from two to three uh, sets, a couple reps of each. Again, volume's low, we're just kind of priming ourselves. Now the main work for our acceleration and really what we're after is that power and that transfer of power that we've developed over here. We're gonna be doing things like resisted sprints. So if you have a sled, these are awesome. We're trying to be at around 50% velocity decrement. Um, if you need to know what that is, it's pretty simple if it takes you say four or two seconds to run a 10 yard split, now you want a weight that's gonna take you four seconds to run it. That is gonna give you the peak amount of power with each and every step that you get. If you don't have resisted sprints, things like stadium sprints, hill sprints, banded sprints, they're all great in here. So we'll typically keep this around five sets and we'll do uh, one to two reps. But again, we need to make sure we're fully recovered and we're not just conditioning ourselves because our goal is power and acceleration. So make sure you take three, five minute rest if you need it before going out there. We don't wanna be like 30 seconds and your quads are burning still. After that, you wanna move into your agility. And again, we kinda of follow the same process. We wanna make sure everything's layered on top of each other so we get the most out of it. So for our agility, we'll start on some tech work. So whatever it ends up being for the day, we can do some, some stops working the correct positioning. 
We can do a three cone drill, working at about 50 to 70% where we're working outside foot, on the ball of the foot, making sure our angles are correct with our shins and our upper body, okay? And then we'll get into some straight change of direction. So this is pre-planned, there's no reaction off of it, where agility is reaction off your environment, making decisions and, and going on the fly. So we'll get to that, but we're gonna start with some cone drills. We can do, one, of, one that we like is a four cone drill where you can sprint, shuffle, turn and run, and then sprint through. That's a very easy one, but you can change up the different types of movements that you're doing. If you wanna do shuffle to diagonal sprint, to open and turn, whatever it ends up being, just a pre-planned, change of direction agility, you can do M cone. There's plenty of them out there. Most agility drills that you see online are gonna be more of the change of direction in nature. And then lastly, if you have it available to you, we're gonna do some reaction-based drills. So reaction, if you have a coach or you have anyone who can point and you react off of either a visual, audio, um, or yeah, that's it, visual or audio <laughs> type of command, then you're gonna go and you'll work that. And again, you can apply the same principles, whether it's a shuffle, turn and run, full sprint. Those are all gonna be great and beneficial for you. So now we've gone through the first three days. What does the rest of the week look like? So we really worked on the strength and force production initially with a little bit of power and plyometrics that are added in there. Now we're gonna work another area of the, what's force velocity curve and the power development. So instead of strength speed like we worked earlier, now we're gonna work some speed strength. So the weight is gonna be lighter, we're gonna be moving it even quicker, really to try to develop coordination, fast twitch muscle fibers to really get that explosiveness that we're looking for. So we're gonna do a full body training split that's primarily focused on the speed strength. So we'll do, some posterior chain work. We'll also work our quads a little bit and the, the squat pattern, and then we'll do a little bit of the upper body in a more of a complex. So first thing we're doing is gonna be something like a hang power clean or a hang high pull. Um, that way we can get to work on the stretch sorting cycle. We can work on our amortization phase of the glutes um, and the hips. And then we're gonna pair that again in a contrast set with something like a triple broad jump. This is really gonna help you maximize that power and repeat power ability. After that, since this is more of a posterior chain, we're gonna work more of a squat pattern in the vertical force production. So we'll do someone that we really like is a trap bar jump. It's very easy, very safe for all of our athletes. Um, so we're gonna be jumping up as high as we can. You're thinking weight anywhere from like 20 to 30% of your one rep max. You're trying to get off the ground as high as you possibly can. For all of these, we're thinking three to five sets, about three reps for each of them. And we're gonna pair that with just a standard box jump or even just a max vertical height jump, something where we're trying to get our true and most amount of power and height that we can out of a vertical jump. After we've knocked those out, again, the volume's low because we have more going on later in the week, we're gonna go through a little bit of a complex, okay? So we're gonna work through the upper body in a more basically coordinated pattern involving every, every aspect. So, We'll do something like a banded bench press where we're working on the acceleration component. Again, this is probably 40 to 60% of your one rep max with some bands. You're trying to move that weight fast. You can up the reps a little bit. You can go anywhere like three to five here, three to five sets. Then we're gonna do landmine rotor press. This is a great exercise because it really helps involve both the coordination of the upper body hips but it really helps with the transfer of force from the legs all the way through the hips and then up through the arm, which I really love for this. And then we're gonna finish it off with something like a sled row or explosive sled row where you're using your legs a little bit and you're pulling and you're ripping that sled as far back as you can to get that quick, fast twitch type of fibers recruited when we we're looking for developing our speed strength of our back. After that, okay, again, this is like full, integration, right? I'm covering everything. Day five, right? That's day four. Day five, we're going to do a conditioning day, okay? When it comes to conditioning, we need to train the energy systems that we primarily use in our sport, okay? So not going for just long miles and runs when your sport requires quick repeat burst of sprints, cutting, change of direction, and then recovering from that. So primarily a lot of my athletes, they're gonna be in the top two energy systems, which are your alactic system or your creatine phosphate, and then your anaerobic, okay? 
Not so much in the aerobic uh, area, but if you're more of like a long distance person or your sport's a little bit longer, it can be beneficial to do a little bit of aerobic training, but we primarily wanna focus on the top two, or you can involve a mixed conditioning where you're doing a few different things. So I'll give a few examples of this. So within each of these energy systems, you have capacity. So think about like how big your, your, your fuel tank is, and then your repeat power ability. So that's your ability to be able to go 100% for, a, for whatever duration it is, recover quickly, and then go again without that power and speed diminishing off. So we need both a big fuel tank and we need to be able to put the pedal to the metal over and over and over and over again to up our performance. So A lactic capacity repeat power, that would be something like a 10 by 10 uh, shuttle that you can do. It's really gonna burn you and smoke the quads, it's full go, full effort with a long rest in between. Anaerobic capacity, this is things that are more in like the 30 second realm to all the way up to two minutes. There's a lot of different types of conditioning that you can do both in the gym and on the field. I'm gonna stick to the field. Uh, if you want some more uh, videos of me demonstrating what you can do in the gym, just comment below and I'll make sure I all create some conditioning YouTube videos for that so you have a better well-rounded uh, idea of what to actually do. But something for aerobic capacity, repeat power, uh, we have in the peak performance program some pyramid sprints, um, which are great for that. They, they work both the capacity and the repeat power. And then there's your aerobic capacity, which we will get into again if you guys want some of that. Uh, but some there's some figure eight runs and things like that you can look up that will help you with that. And then your mixed conditioning. And then day seven, top speed, really simple, but a lot of effort. You're gonna work on top speed. And the reason we have it day seven is because day six, you're gonna be doing a recovery mobility day. You're letting your central nervous system recover. And then we're gonna work a lot of techniques. So about half your time is warming up and doing technique drills. And then the last half, you're gonna be working pure top speed. And one that we love is fly sprints. It's a max effort sprint with an easy, nice jog build up. And you're trying to hit the top miles per hour that you can for that workout. So I hope this was helpful for all of you. Now you have an understanding of how, if you were gonna do a full week of training, how you can set it up. And if you want someone like me to take care of all this for you so you know exactly what to do and you have the best training plan available for you as you try to reach your goals, maybe going from amateur to pro or just being an elite athlete and wanna get back to training as an athlete, sign up for the Peak Performance Program below. We can hop on a call, I'll talk with you. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. And as always, train hard.